On the previous video, we went through all the procedures of starting the Cessna 152 and making it ready for taxiing. Today, I will be guiding you through the taxiing phase, run up, and takeoff. Note that this video is for absolute beginners, but seasoned flight simmers and real life student pilots are also welcome. If you missed the last video, link is in the description box below. Let's get started. As you can see, our aircraft has already started. What we have to do first is turn the taxi light on. Even during daylight, airplanes need to turn their lights on just to give that extra visibility to people and other aircraft that might be getting in the way. When you're ready to move, look to your left and right and confirm that you're not gonna bump into anything or anyone. Add a little power for 1100 RPMs or 1200 RPMs and your aircraft will move forward as soon as you release the brakes. You have to be very careful in maneuvering your aircraft on the ground because visibility is quite limited. Remember, your wingspan is about 24 feet or 10 meters wide, and moving it through the airport safely is quite a challenge. Things like this have happened many times, which is why it is very important for you to follow the taxiway center line. As soon as you move forward, apply your brakes just a tiny bit to see if it works correctly. Even though it does not make sense in the sim, in real life this habit can be very helpful. Now taxiing requires a lot of differential braking. Differential braking is applying different brake pressures for each wheel. In your car, you have one pedal that applies equal braking to all of your wheels. In an aircraft, you have separate brakes for each wheel. Apply brake to your right, your aircraft pivots to the right. Apply brake to your left, your aircraft pivots to the left. This is done together with steering the nose wheel using your rudder pedals. Stepping on the pedals turns your nose wheel either to the left or right. Stepping on the toes of the pedals will give you brakes either in the left or right. Combining these actions will take a lot of practice. In the sim, it will surely help if you have a pedal with your controller. If you don't have a controller, you can use a keyboard mapping for differential braking instead. Now that your aircraft is moving, check to see if your heading indicator matches with your magnetic compass, especially when you're making turns. They have to have the exact same reading. Otherwise, you need to adjust your heading indicator. This is especially true if you have gyro drift enabled, for realism purposes. While we're taxiing to the runway, let me give a brief overview on your instruments. This is called the pilot's six-pack. No, not that six-pack. This one right here is your airspeed indicator. The one next to it is your attitude indicator. This one is your altimeter, and the one below it is your vertical speed indicator. To the lower left is your turn indicator, and finally this is the heading indicator. Throughout most of the flight, the six-pack will be your friend, your lifeline even. You have to keep your eyes on your six-pack all the time. Even if you're flying at night, guaranteed, you will be able to fly safely just by looking at these gauges. In the future, I will be covering in detail what these instruments do and how you can correctly use them. For now, we are nearing our designated runway and it is time for us to do an engine run-up. Run-up is basically all about testing your engine, whether or not it can give enough power for a safe flight. Before doing a run-up, make sure that you are facing the wind. In this case, the wind is coming from 240 degrees, about southwest. So we have to point our aircraft more or less towards that direction. Now we are ready for our run-up. The Lycoming 0235 engine of the Cessna 152 has two magnetos, each giving electrical power to a spark plug in each of the four cylinders. We have to make sure that each magneto can provide sufficient power in case the other one fails. This is one of the many redundancies in aircraft that help keep flying safe. The first thing to do here is verify that your mixture is pushed all the way to rich before setting your power all the way to 1700 RPMs. Now, with the ignition key, select the left magneto. At this point, 
only your left magneto is giving sparks to your engine. If your power drops to more than 100 RPMs with just one magneto running, there might be something wrong with either your magneto or the spark plugs. Now turn the ignition key back to both. It's back to 1700. Now turn the key again, this time to the right magneto. Your RPM should also drop to about 100 RPMs. Any more than that is also not good. Now turn the key back to both and the RPM is of course back to 1700. All right, magnetos are good. Now turn your carb heat on. Again, there should be a small drop in RPM. So far so good, turn the carb heat off and push your throttle all the way to full power and check if it indeed gives you 2400 RPMs. After that, pull your power all the way down to idle and make sure it does not go below 650 RPMs. Any lower than that is not good. If everything looks good, push your power back to 1100 RPM, release your brakes, and you can now proceed with takeoff. Now, taking off is easy. All you have to do is set full power and you're ready to go. But right before entering the runway, you have to turn your landing light on. Set the transponder to altitude, verify that mixture is pushed all the way to rich, flaps set for takeoff, although this depends, but in this case, we set it to 10 degrees, carb heat is off, and elevator trims are set for takeoff. As you enter the runway, try to position your aircraft as close to the center line as possible. This does not only display good airmanship, but it is also a very important safety factor. Now add full power. At this point, keeping the aircraft running straight can be very tricky because the left turning tendency of your aircraft will get stronger and stronger. As your RPM goes up, glance at your oil gauges and suction gauge to see if they are in the greens, check if your airspeed indicator is alive, look outside again to see if you're still on the center line, and go back to your airspeed indicator to see if you're above 55 knots. If so, gently pull up and aim for a 500 feet per minute ascend while flying on a straight line. As soon as you're off the ground, apply your brakes so that your wheels will stop spinning. Otherwise, your aircraft will vibrate so bad. Trust me, this happened to me many times in real life. Once you're 500 feet above the ground, reduce power to about 2200 RPMs and maintain a steady climb of 500 feet per minute all the way to your cruising altitude. At this point, you can also start making a turn towards wherever you're heading. On the next episode, I will be discussing in detail the flight instruments, how they work, and how you can use them, and of course, some basic flight maneuvers. I hope you enjoyed this video. This has been Marty, and I'll see you tomorrow.